What is up everyone and welcome to Grow As We Go. Hey y'all, it's Ashley. I'm Diana. I'm Fatima. And I'm Angie. And welcome to our episode. And today we're going to keep it pretty lighthearted today. What our time has occupied since quarantine has started. And I'm pretty sure that's a universal thing right now. And it has been through movies and TV shows. And also, happy fifth day of 2021. Woo! So glad you all made it. Yes. We're here. New we year. did it. Awesome. New year, new us. <laughs> 2020 has expired. I wanted to ask you guys, so what kind of movies and TV shows have you guys been occupying yourselves, like, especially since quarantine? Like, what has been, like, your hot thing this year or your favorite TV Mm. show that you just binged or you haven't stopped Mm. raving about since that you recommend to a lot of people? Like, what's hot and popping? What's your thing? Okay, so one thing that I've been really surprised that I was really into this, I think I told you about this movie or this TV show. Oh, by the way, I watched so many, so much TV shows, so I have a plethora to choose from. But this one really stood out to me during quarantine, and it was The Last Dance, which can be found on Netflix. It was basically a story about Michael Jordan and how the Chicago Bulls kind of came to win all of their championships. And it's Mm -hmm. just so crazy. It's kind of more like a documentary, kind of like a docu docu series. Yeah, it's like a couple episodes, right? It's like yeah, it's like seven, five, I think nine. It's like short, and like I'm not even like a basketball fan you know what i mean so like i was still really like, entertained by it surprisingly that's like one of my favorite shows that i've been watched during quarantine oh, but of course there was like tiger king which everybody's seen and i'm sure you guys have i did not movie. see that i Is have that not where seen the it baskin thing comes from because if yeah it was, i think I so what? i haven't i'm, I'm, I'm with you too angie it's okay <laughs> Fati, did, you Fati, did you see this oh, you're laughing did you see this <laughs> yeah. all i did was hear like the only thing i know about that show is the like that song that she like killed Kill. her oh, husband apparently best. like i don't yeah. even know if that's a real thing it's still weird weirdest show or documentary yes. ever but it's so it's so intriguing like i just mm-hmm. keep, wanted to keep watching like what's mm-hmm. next what's next even it's just the weirdest thing ever Wait, but what made it weird <laughs> i don't know it, it's i for sure agree with what fatima was saying it's because like you're watching a show on like tigers and like the mafia behind tigers and then it has like this big plot twist about how one of them might have killed her husband like what like it, it's just a whole bunch of like yeah. florida stuff basically like it's so florida <laughs> it's florida in a show i do think she killed her oh, husband of course, of course. She is scary. No way. If you want to know why, you have to go watch it. <laughs> I've seen an interview of her and she looks very sweet and nice and she doesn't look like she'd kill a single No, fly. no, 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 dude. You haven't watched the documentary. You go watch it and then come back and tell me if you think she's sweet. She has kind of like Seriously? that creepy vibe. Kind of like, you know, when they're like overly yeah. nice and you're like, something's wrong with you. I yeah. like get those vibes. Like, sh- like, she's always like, yeah. Like, sh- she's just like too nice mm. and like, it's like, does something's wrong, you know? Yeah. It's like those creepy grandmas that invite you in your house with cookies and then they just <laughs> try to kill you. It's those. <laughs> You saying that reminded me of that one movie, It. I don't even think, oh, did they come out with that one? It was like, I remember seeing a trailer and it was um, a grandma and it was in her home. Yeah, did yeah, you yeah. guys? It too, right? Yeah. It was the second yeah. one. Yeah, no, 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 yeah, it was yeah. three, I think. It was three. No, there's only two. Was... There's only two. Oh, yeah. have you guys seen it? Yeah. yeah. Is it good? No. It was whack. What? Um, the trailer looks so good. I love scary movies. Really? I didn't know that. Yeah, I love scary. I love watching. What do you mean you didn't know that? I didn't know that. <laughs> She's a fake friend, huh, Fati? <laughs> yeah. I think me and Diana are the only ones who We're love always scary repeating movies. this to you, y'all, because you guys are the ones <laughs> that don't like it, and me and her are the ones that love them. <laughs> I know. I'm, like, really curious, though. Like, what about scary movies make you so compelled to watch them? <laughs> it's because the adrenaline that you get like it's like really? oh my god what's gonna happen oh my god and then but like the pop-ups f- like you're scared at first yeah you're scared at the pop-ups but then it's like whoa like give me more i mean is it only for cycles or what like i don't know <laughs> like, i just always felt like scary movies it was like short-term thrill like i never felt like heightened like it's or prolonged because of the plot like yeah. there's no there's no character development i feel like or maybe there is but like very minimal have you seen insidious i have seen all of them oh my and god i'm sorry i'm sorry <laughs> Which one's your favorite? Or like, what's your favorite series? Annabelle. I watched all Annabelle movies. Conjuring. Oh, I've seen Annabelle. Insidious. I can't picture about you watching these scary movies. <laughs> I love them. Like, once they come out, I'm just like, okay, I'm going to watch get, it. You don't get like scared? And I, I do get scared, but I mean. But you like it? Like, just last genuinely, just can you sleep days. when you get home? The only movie I couldn't sleep for like two or three days was Hereditary. Just because it made me, f- it wasn't even because it was scary it's because it just made me feel really uncomfortable Uncom- because of the yes. yeah it was just like oh my god i'm gonna go to hell for watching this 
<laughs> no hereditary mm. is so effing weird and the way that yeah. it ends so i don't even want to be a spoiler but if no. you if you like it <laughs> props I to you. no i don't even want to say props to you for <laughs> liking said, it i'm a little concerned wait have you guys watched hereditary no dude if I've they really haven't watched seen... insidious they're n- no, no angie angie we've seen midsummer it's identical to the like the same director even directed oh. it like it's creepy like that okay like, it's... yeah me and diana watched midsummer it was it was very uncomfortable i'm not gonna lie like for a whole day i felt yeah. weird and it was just so That's out of the blue but i'm very curious yeah. to know where these like practices stem from and like if they're it's like, like, like what the influences movie, were right? be- yeah and i'm kind of like oh okay like where did this idea come from you know like that's weird but i really like how the director mm-hmm. did that because it made the audience feel that type of way and i think i'm pretty sure that was his like target to do Mm -hmm. i feel like what he he put in um his ideas are it's scary because it was really happens in real life and it's like people may not believe it because it's like a movie you know and maybe Uh a little dramatized but it's like no those things actually happen and that's the scary part about it i think that's the cool thing about midsummer despite it being extremely creepy was how paradoxical it was like it's very like the concepts and everything that they did the music the action that they did was so con- contrast so deeply to what the film looked like i mean it was like shot in broad daylight the entire time like oh. they were wearing beautiful dresses so that's like the most ironic the part like in this beautiful me- field this yeah. meadow and i mean i feel like that's probably why we freaked out because there are two things that we're not used to seeing together like we mm. have like this notion that good happy light is together and then like dark scary black you know on the other so like seeing that together was like Very whoa like i'm not used to this i guess now that I think about it I feel like I don't like scary stuff but I do like crime and like murder stuff because you would think like somebody would be more scared about like all these serial killer shows that I like to watch a lot <laughs> versus like little, I love like... serial killers I don't know like that <laughs> I feel, Wait, she yeah. like Ted Bundy <laughs> I know that's what I was gonna say <laughs> oh my gosh one thing one of the a documentary or like a series i just watched also like i watched all of these on netflix netflix is like the best for like crime mystery murder shows mm-hmm. it's called i think it was the american family and that was so i don't know if y'all remember but i literally wanted to throw up after i was seeing that movie after i seen that series i like wanted to throw no up way. i felt sick to my stomach i literally couldn't like breathe it's just so insane i think what fascinates me the most is like through these like documentaries or like these series i get to see like a glimpse of like what these serial killers or these murders like their process and their thinking process and i think it's like super interesting to like just see what these people are coming from and like why they do these like heinous crimes you know what i mean that like ties it back to like one of like my most favorite series ever it's called mind hunter on, on netflix and it's so so mm. so so good i don't i'm gonna say the wrong decade but i think it was the 80s i'm not sure but it was these two fbi agents and they work for the psychology department and this was before like mm. serial killers was a thing like they didn't know what serial killers were they didn't know what led to having multiple um killers and so what they do Mm. is that they start to interview all of these famous killers such as like charles manson and all these other um famous killers that have been notorious in the united states in like the history of the fui there has never been like interviews with the murders and say like why did you do this what did you think about when you were murdering these people like what was your thought process what did you why did you want to do it Mm. and we were able Mm. to analyze and see the importance of how like psychological trauma affects all of these killings like all these killers Mm. they have had a notorious history of like dealing with psychological problems and it's just like Mm -hmm. so interesting and it feels like so eerie i guess like that sensation that i got like the eerie sensation is kind of like the same thing you guys can get when you guys watch those murder movies i mean those yeah but i feel like it's also different because i like watching the real life stuff Mm -hmm. but i think it's completely different from like scary movies because scary movies it's never real and it's not something that would actually happen what about like the exorcist is that not real that's not real right oh yeah like the emily rose one that was real right or am i bsing that i know there was one that was real like the old one right it's like yeah 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 like the old 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 virgin i've never seen the like, exorcist movies but i have heard like some of those cases are real I- mm-hmm. like That's my scary. dad actually i don't even know if he like he, he wants me to say this but i'm just gonna tell you guys because <laughs> i'm here he actually went through an exorcism thing it was on his sister and it was when he was younger and it was insane and ever since then he's never been wanting to watch a scary movie especially exorcist type of movies because it just triggers him yeah so i i I think it does 
I've I kind of really, I've never gone through an exodus, but I've had some paranormal. I think oh my God. some paranormal stuff happened. To yes, me as a I child. remember. Uh huh. Yeah, because of that, I can't really watch scary movies because like I'm traumatized. Like that's some trauma like that I have. So I I can't because it does trigger me too, and I'm just like I'd rather not. But Fatih, you've also went through some things yeah, too, like, too. and you and you still love scary movies. I like, love scary movies. It's just well, what I went through, I don't think it was harmful or anything. It was or just, traumatizing. I, I just think it was, it's a spirit. It's a very harmless spirit. What about you guys? Like, if you Fatih and Diana, like, what are some shows or movies that you guys have been watching over quarantine? I watched The Crown. Oh my god! Yes. <laughs> I love not the shut crown. up about The Crown. Yeah, I know. I've been telling everybody to watch it, and my sister and my cousin love watching it so too. Good. And Ash it's so good i don't want to say i don't like fictional things but i get intrigued more when it's based on real life yes. and i know they kind of exaggerate certain things of course but mm. just watching a whole series on the royal family just is very intriguing and especially season four with prince diana and don't talk about it because i haven't seen I it yet <laughs> even though i know history. No, no, no i just <laughs> I don't know. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say anything to spoil it. But I just want to say, remind me not to be ever be a princess. <laughs> really, just putting that out there. <laughs> what about you, Diana? What are some shows that you've seen? One movie that did stick out to me, which was like it came out in 2019, but it was Little Woman. Have you guys seen <laughs> Little Woman? Yeah. <laughs> I freaking love that movie. I love that movie. Fati, um, Angie, and Wait, I. Did we put it? it in... Did I? We watched it at my house, right, for the first time. No, no we, we went, went to the movie theater. theater. I remember. Okay, this oh, we did. We did. Wait, no. Ashley wasn't even there. She remembered. I was the one who, because you guys were gonna go to the movie theater, and I was like, I heard Little Woman is a really good movie. Y'all should you go did. watch that. Yeah. And then I remember you I was did. so mad at Fati because at the end of the when you guys came out of the movie, I texted y'all. I was like, Oh, so how was the movie? And Fati like said like the whole thing. She's like, I hate so and so, and I was like, I haven't even seen the movie. You just <laughs> oh, ruined yeah. it for me. I only said it, that I hated it. the sister. <laughs> me and Diana had a really interesting conversation about Little Women not so long ago and we touched based on the idea of a lot of movies a lot of things that we grew up with movies television shows and just books in general for for women for young girls were never centered around the female protagonist going through like a self journey for her success without a love interest we wish that there is more movies like little woman when we were little girls like we wish that we saw that more yeah, and like how that big of an influence and impact that would have been for younger girls if we ever would have seen this kind of movie when we were younger. Because when you watch the movie and you finish it, you're like, damn, I can do anything without a man. Mm -hmm. And it's like maybe for a reason that's why they didn't make them because they knew that <laughs> women weren't going to feel like, you know, you know. <laughs> We it defies. But yeah, like, what we this highly recommend that movie. Is built on, you know, movies like that, like how you're talking about how like it's so crazy because there's probably a reason why that we didn't really see it that much. I think that goes back to how movies like that sort of defy what our society is kind mm -hmm. of structured to, like how women are supposed to be submissive to men, and mm -hmm. and it's so crazy. And I think barely now we're seeing more movies, especially kids movies, where the female protagonist doesn't have a love interest at all. Like, like Moana. for example, Moana's of her not having a love interest at all. But I mean, we grew up with princesses who were always in some way having some sort of love interest, you know? I'm sure none of you guys watched this, but the viewers, if you watched it, then I F with you. <laughs> Ratchet on Netflix. It's incredible. The protagonist is the lady... Sarah Paulson. Her name is Sarah something. Yeah, her. She's from mm. American Horror Story for our yes! YouTube viewers. Oh my gosh, she's on my list. She's on my Dude, list of yes, favorite actresses. Dude, yes, watch that show. That show is so effing good. And what if you about? like American Horror Story, you'll like it. And okay. I like it a lot because even the the um the way it's filmed, the way the colors they used, like everything about it is so... Even the era... For me to really like a movie, I think it has to go exactly deeper than the plot and deeper. I, I think all of the elements of the movie or the show adds to the experience. I think what makes a good movie or a good show is if you leave the episode like adapting or feeling like the main character in that episode, like in the show. Like I remember growing up and like walking out of the theater and f like literally for like a whole hour being having like this distortion of reality and like having it so hard to transition back to like normal life bro like that's when a movie is really good okay so one of my favorite movies of all time when i was quarantined <laughs> when i was sick for like i watched this movie like three times not gonna lie is pearl harbor oh my god i, I <laughs> knew it <laughs> but he's such a rom-com person so basically, in Pearl Harbor, obviously, it tells you the story that happened in Pearl Harbor. It, it's also very informational, mm -hmm. but um, I just love the romantic part of the movie. Oh, it's just Ben Affleck in the movie. It's just, oh, my God. I wish he stayed like that forever. But um, 
I just think because also the aesthetic of it. I just love like the 1940s, mm. the aesthetic of it and the romantic part. And it's just, yeah. if you like the romantic mm-hmm. 1940s, I highly suggest to watch it. Another movie that I really love that's really romantic and it brings tears to your eyes is PSI I know, Review. I know, I know, I know, I know. I know. <laughs> It really inspired me to go to Ireland. I really want to go to Ireland now. It's not. I don't think it's cringy. Maybe just the way I, because of the way I am. But <laughs> I really love the movie. If our viewers um, like romantic movies, I also like them too. There's one called One Day, and I think you can watch it on Netflix. Have you guys yeah, you watched can. it? It's yeah. with um, Anne Hathaway. Yeah. Dude, that movie is uh-huh. so good, and it makes you cry. <sighs> one movie that I've been binging that I re-found my love for over quarantine has been Pride and Prejudice. I was super obsessed with it in high school. Like the soundtrack to that movie is probably one of my favorite soundtracks. I love the way that it was shot. I love the dialogue. I love the actors. Everything about that movie, yeah. I can go on and on and on. Like I talk about it for four, I can do a whole fucking podcast about I love that movie. <laughs> Um, but that movie is so good and it's on Netflix. For my romance lovers, 500 Days of Summer, that nope. is such a good movie. Have you guys, you guys haven't no. watched it? Haven't seen it. <laughs> it's no. so good. It's with Zoe De Chanel and with uh, Joseph Gordon Levitt. Love it. Is that his name? Joseph Gordon. Gordon. There you go. Wow. But um, going along with what um, Angie was saying prior, the colors used in the film is so like such a good contrast with the way that yes with the way the the movie is set up for an example zoe de chanel her character she always wears blue and mm. even the settings is like dull colors and then there's like a little pops of blue wherever mm. she is and it's like things like that it's I it like just that. makes it 10 times better and like the soundtrack is so good they have the smiths and the soundtrack <gasps> you soundtrack you need so to watch 500 days of summer and you could watch oh. it on um hulu is it kind of like um la la land kind of like the colors i was gonna say that <laughs> I love Can we talk about La La Land, La La Land please. La okay, La so here's me about movie. La La Land. I don't like the storyline because it's so predictable. And blah, blah, blah. Like, I hate... That's just me. I'm very, like, okay. a Grinch, you know? I don't mm-hmm. really, like, love stories. But... The ending... You thought the ending but, was predictable? But, I know I was going to say that. But I will say, the ending is for sure... You can just predict, like, oh, there's going to have some troubles and it's not going to work out and, you know, blah, 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 you know? But I really, really like the cinematography of it. Like, I, it was very pleasing yes. to see the movie. Mm-hmm. And the soundtrack is so, mm-hmm. so, so mm-hmm. good. And also, can that we give a round so of applause good. to Ryan Gosling? like just that in itself ryan gossie's in it just watch it watch it i am such a huge fan of ryan gossing <laughs> also crazy rich asians i love all I've that never seen oh it. i love that movie too i haven't either <laughs> that one's good you guys need to watch crazy rich asians it's so good it definitely made me feel poor but whatever it's okay no it's so cute you need to watch it it's cute <laughs> okay okay one last romantic movie <laughs> like this is tops Girl. tops tops <laughs> Twilight, come on now, Twilight. Oh, hello. Is it, do, you, do you think it's do you think it's underrated or overrated? Like be be dead ass. I don't think it's over. Okay, it's a product of its time. Yeah. so I don't think it's overrated. If, so like that's the one thing. Like when I start, like I'm I'm obsessed with like I literally sleep, breathe, and eat <laughs> Twilight. <laughs> and especially especially Edward. Come on now, Edward. <laughs> team Edward. Team Edward. Team Edward. Team, team Jacob. Edward. I bet y'all are some All team way. Jacob people. It's fine. I know Angie, Angie was Team Jacob. Girl, Angie's a Team Jacob. Growing up, I was Team Jacob. Dude, in middle all school, Angie had, used to have a sudden, poster. What? She used to have a poster in her room, and then we would... It, at that time, it was Tango instead of FaceTime. <laughs> and she would kiss her poster. <laughs> <laughs> of Jacob at the exposing. <laughs> I was like, look, look. <laughs> Going back to TV shows, y'all have heard me rave about this TV show like a kid since summer, and it's the, the Avatar The Last Airbender. Oh, yeah. I am a huge oh, Avatar gosh. fan. I can go on and on about it, but if you it's have... such if, a good show. It's so crazy to me how a show for little kids, quote-unquote little kids, could be so timeless and still hit hard as a 21-year-old. And that's what blows my mind is like how a kid's show could just still make me want to be a better person at, then and now. So I, if you haven't watched Avatar, highly think that you should. Has very progressive themes in the in the show. Where do you watch it on? Netflix, baby. Fatih, do you have any other shows? I don't really watch shows. <laughs> oh, I mean, well, you liked Emily in Paris, but I heard. <gasps> oh yeah, how did I forget about that? <laughs> 
be honest, Fatima. What is your review on Emily in Paris? It was cute. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest. It was cute. Like, would you recommend for people to watch it? Or does, does it like if you're bored and there's nothing to watch, maybe you should watch Emily in Paris. And we're like, no, you need to watch Emily in Paris now. I think if you're bored and you, you just want to want to watch something that's not, it's, I don't think it's boring. It, it wasn't too. It wasn't like amazing, but I liked it. I liked the also the aesthetic of it too. What is it about? Yeah, she lived in New York, and then she got like this promotion that she got the opportunity to live in Paris, and she's pr- pretty much trying to give them like the American perspective and like, oh yeah, how to advertise themselves th- throughout social media and stuff, and all, and then and like in Paris, obviously they perceive things very differently. Mm-hmm. So she's pretty much trying to like embody that, yeah, embody like the American perspective. What is like your guys's number one? If you guys can keep it to one, who's your like favorite actress at the moment and your favorite actor at the moment? I think I can go ahead and right off the bat say Viola Davis. I love that woman so Period. much. She is so moving and so emotional and just so raw. Oh, I just love her so much. Like how to get away with murder. Like if she she wasn't Annalise Keating, I don't know how that show would have came about, but she literally makes oh, that really? show. Also a really good show if y'all are interested. It's you can find it on I think Hulu or Net- oh no, it's on Netflix. It's on Netflix. What about an actor? I don't know who that is. <laughs> you don't know who she is? You know who she is. Yes, yeah, you, you do. Know she have you seen the help? Her up. I'm telling Look you. Her up. I'm bad at names. I'm telling you. You have you, to see you her. Know, as a picture have you seen the help? You've seen the help. I don't She's know. Uh, Maybelline. You is kind, oh you is sweet, you is important. This beautiful woman. Oh, okay. My favorite actor, I have a list, but I think at the moment um i'll keep it short and that i have been really liking him as a person as well and i really admire how he could really i think it takes a very special kind of person to go into different roles and really play that and embody that with their whole entire selves and i feel like jim carrey is oh, are you talking about jim carrey that. i literally was yeah. thinking about jim carrey right now like he's a really great actor yeah like he is I, my favorite actor right now he's just i want to get more into his work and i think of him as a person like He's just very inspiring as well. And Jim Carrey for me mm-hmm. right now. And my favorite actress, since you mentioned Viola Davis and we talked about Sarah Paulson earlier, I'm going to mention Zendaya for right, I for knew right you were now. I think, say she, that. I think she killed it in Euphoria. I really love that show. And I think she's been really excelling as an actress. I love seeing her grow throughout like from shake it up to oh like God, shake it all up the roles that she's embodying. And, you know, she won, an, I believe, an Oscar. Mm-hmm. she won an oscar for euphoria and i think it was really well deserved she bodied that role and i'm so excited to see her excel as an actress what about you diana an actress would be sarah paulson only because like i said before i didn't watch a lot of tv um during 2020 but she that ratched really you know stood out to me and she is such a good actress she can literally play any role and it's so cool and complex she can get because in every role that she has in american horror story it's completely different and you see how like dynamic she can be and how like bad or yes. good and she actually just came out with the movie i've been wanting to see it's on netflix it's like brand new oh. um but she plays like this yeah. this type of character that's completely different it's like very real life and raw kind of character and before she would do more fictional fictional type i don't know how to explain that but yeah i've been really wanting to watch that movie um and for my favorite actor at the moment james mccavoy mccavoy let me put a picture up so you guys know what i'm talking about it's the guy from split he's such a good actor have you guys seen split no yeah it's such a good movie he, oh. he killed it. Wait, wait. What's Split about? Split is about... Wait. He plays a character where he has... Um, oh, the multiple... Um, he kidnaps... Yeah, the multiple personalities. Really? But because of that movie, he's, like, stood out to me because he was so good in that movie. Like, so good. And um, I think another one would be Adam Driver. And he looks like the dude from Star Wars, but he's not. I'll show you who he is right now. He um, was in the movie Marriage Story, and I don't know if you guys have seen that movie. Oh, I see the memes all the time on Twitter. Oh, okay, okay. Um, If you've seen Marriage Story, then you know what I'm talking about, but he was such a good Wait, was that a good movie? I mean, he played... Yeah, that movie is so good because it didn't have a happily ever after, like normal movies or normal movies Mm. do whatever, you know? What about you, Fatih? Do you have someone? So one of my favorite actresses is um, Helena bonham carter she's the one who plays fairy godmother in cinderella 
Yes. She yes. <laughs> yes. I love her because she's. Oh, I just her and Johnny Depp are just like mm. pretty much. She's a version of Johnny Depp, like a female I version of Johnny that. Depp. I just okay. like they're, yeah, they're cre- they're Bella so Trix creative and Potter. such. She's from yeah. Harry Potter. Yeah. So good. Yes. Yeah. I just I, I love her so much. Um, I, I love m- many other ones, but I just think on the creative side, I just love how she acts and the type of movies she comes in. Mm-hmm. Like, Tim, Bur- Tim Burton movies are really like so Tim Burton good. movies. And then actor, I would choose Leonardo DiCaprio. I just think he's just a warm-hearted person. I love the mo- how he acts in um, Titanic and um, Great Gatsby. And also love his documentary on um, climate change. It's called um, Before the Flood. Yeah, it's called Before the Flood. So good. And I just think he's a yeah he's a huge advocate on climate change, and mm-hmm. I, I just love that about him. Yeah. So I I just feel like he's he deserves more. You know. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't is he does he even I don't think he has like an Oscar or something like that. I think he, he has won one. Yeah. He won one. He deserves a it's million. He always be going up with really good people. <laughs> like, He's so always like, a he's so girl. good. Poor guy. I feel so bad. He's so. But anyways, good just to plug in his drunk. little climate change documentary before the flood. It's so 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 good. It's very very informational for people who have maybe yes. have no idea what climate change is. Um, you can find it. I think Fatima says on Disney Plus. You can also watch it on YouTube. Mm-hmm. It just talks about how he's informing himself more to kind of just like kind of leave that stereotype as oh i'm just an actor he is also a climate yeah. change mm. activist so i really like it you guys should I watch love it that. before the flood <laughs> on the earth by zach efron also in that realm if you're into series about climate <laughs> and sustainable living before i discovered her segment we're gonna do something a little bit different i wanted to ask you guys to rate your platforms from one being your top to four or five being your least favorite i think the platforms i watched the most this year because i don't really wa- use a lot of them but i use netflix probably number one and then i use prime video and then disney plus i think i would rate mine one amazon prime only because if i want to watch a movie that's not there i can always pay for it and they always have it <laughs> um second hulu because they have a lot of good shows um, third, Netflix, and fourth, HBO Max. Even though I don't even have HBO Max, like there's a lot of good movies on there, mm-hmm. but those are my four. And then my fifth, I don't know. Netflix. Netflix. Yeah, <laughs> Netflix is kind of ass though. But. What? Interesting. Interesting. I think I'm a little bit conflicted between Hulu and Netflix. I know for sure third place is Amazon Prime. I guess I'll just do um, Netflix number one because I love TV shows and they have a variety of TV shows. And then I'll do Hulu second. So Netflix, Hulu, and then Amazon Prime. I'm going to put, based on this year, my ha- my viewing habits, I'm going to put Amazon Prime at top because I also have my HBOs connected to Amazon. And HBO had Game of Thrones and um, Euphoria. So the, and they have a lot of good, exactly a lot of good stuff. So I'm going to put Prime at the top. Then I'll probably do Netflix, then Disney Plus, then Hulu. Alrighty, thank you all just so much for joining us today. For more content, head over to our IG at Grow As We Go Podcast and also head over to our YouTube channel, which is Grow As We Go Podcast as well. So you could see all the times we showed you guys our screen over phones of all our favorite actors and movies because we definitely were showing our screen a lot today. Um, but yeah, we hope you all enjoyed your dose of growth for today and remember to always strike for growth. We'll see you guys next time. 7 a.m. on Tuesday. Bye. Bye.